Welcome to a short presentation of PShell, a TCL programming interface to PTC's Creo Parametric. You see, we have already started Creo 4, and no model is currently in session. The next step is to start TCL. In this video we use the asynchronous connection, where we connect to an existing Creo session. The package will provide us a command which enables us to spawn a new, or connect to an existing Creo session. This new command is PS session. The next step is to create a new session object. During this step we configure a path to a text folder, where Creo reads message or menu definitions information. Now we can connect to Creo. After we have established a connection to Creo we have more commands, which enables us to access the Creo database. With the first very simple command, we ask Creo to display a message. The psglob command allows us to list the loaded files, either all or by a matching pattern. Now let's open an assembly. First we open this assembly from disk. Next we want the assembly to be displayed. Normally you would run a script and execute TCL together with pshell commands to access the Creo database. Next we activate the housing to see some feature related commands. For easier typing we assign to the variable m the current model in Creo. Each comment in pshell has a help option, let's see the results for the feature command. Next get the list of all feature IDs for the active model. In asynchronous mode we have to specify the model name. The result is a list of feature IDs in the specified model. No we suppress one feature. A command is always structured in this way, the root command, next the task we want to execute, followed by options for this task if available, and the final arguments. In this example the option is given by specifying the model. The final argument is the feature ID. To see the results we may have to refresh the window. Next get the features back into the model and see what will happen if we have some errors during command processing. Now we expand the model tree, and get all whole feature, in the current model. The results from this command are IDs where the feature type is a whole. Now see what we can do with dimensions. First list all dimension or by a pattern. Next get a handle to one dimension. See what commands are available and how we can configure one dimension. If we list the dimensions, pshell will return a list of items. Each item will contain the ID, the symbolic name, and the current value. We can specify a pattern as well, to display only dimensions, where the symbolic name match. Now get one dimension handle, or the object command the returned value is a command which can be used to modify a couple of properties related to one dimension, for example the tolerance information. To get a properties use the get task, for changing use configure. Now we change the dimension value, after changing the dimension, if we want to see the result, we need to regenerate the model with the psregin command and refresh the window. Parameter works similar to dimensions, 
OK, let's check the value of the description parameter first. If you want to get all model parameters, simply list all names by the command groups param names. To get the handle object, use the subcommand or task ps param list. Next, we modify the value and check the result back in Creo. Now create a small interface to change and or create a new parameter in Creo. The interface contains a label and a combo box to select our fruits. After creating these two widgets, we need to bind the selection to an action in Creo, which should create or update a parameter. The function does not already exist. So create a very simple callback. The parameter which will be created is named selected fruit. Now we can pick the Kamba box to set or create a parameter value. As you saw earlier, the parameter does not already exist. After the first selection the parameter is created. For the next selections the parameter is updated only. The recommended way of changing a value is by the object command, as shown before by the configure subcommand. But this will work as well, as long the type match. Based on the given procedure, you see the current model is used. If we now open another model, we can use the same interface to support this parameter. The main information in a selection object is the model item in the component path which identifies the model item uniquely in an assembly. First I show how to ask a user to select a surface. At the beginning you create the selection object command. I use cell for the command name. Next we invoke the selection create by asking for a surface. We did not specify the model item, but we are able to extract this. After extract this information we can get the associated data, like ID, type and model. Next we configure the command by a new model item. Ask the user to select again but now get the information directly from the item without extracting. Here you see that either the model item or the component path data is automatically updated. Next we configure the color to display the selection, and for fun we walk to each surface of the model and display, wait, and erase the selection. For this we request to get the list of all surfaces in the model, and next we perform a loop through each surface by using the TCL for each command. Thanks for your interest.